friendly. In the crime business, the heavy is classically a huge bloke whose muscle is up for hire, and no one typifies the role more than Lenny the Governor McLean. Lenny was a living legend and the truth behind a dozen urban myths, all of them extremely violent. Lenny is the governor, but he was unbeatable. He was the hardest bastard. <laughs> Lenny had a fearsome reputation. The best fighter I have ever seen, according to crime associate, the late Ronnie Cray. He was well respected by well respected people. Certainly his place within the underworld and his place within the kind of mythology of British crime is really important because of the extent to which he was able to take his violent activity. Always, always an awesome figure. He didn't go out of his way to bulk up, he just grew into Lenny. Born in London in 1949, he grew up on the old East End streets and was famous for bare knuckles fighting. His speed was just quite incredible. He bit, hit and stamped his way through 20,000 barroom brawls. They came, they had a pop, and you put them down. Simple as that. Lenny's talents were in big demand as a freelance heavy for several criminal firms. He was friends with gangland bosses Joey Pyle and Arthur Thompson Sr. He was involved in protection, debt collection, and Lenny-style intimidation. You could say enforcer. He didn't go out robbing banks, but he was involved with people on the other side of the law to look after their interests, to make problems go away. He developed a reputation which was nationwide as being a man of violence. And after a period of time, he very seldom actually had to use violence in order to get his point across. There was deals being done and Lenny was standing behind the particular firm that had asked him in, there'd be no trouble because nobody would take Lenny on. But he'd earned that reputation in every sense of the word in a hard way. One look could settle trouble. And if you wanted to pursue it further than that, then trouble is what you get. The deterrence value of having someone with that kind of reputation on your firm or certainly on your side, um, it, it cannot be underestimated. At his earning peak, he could get five grand a day. Impressive now, that was mental money in the 70s. But even the biggest are brought down and Lenny died of cancer in 1998. In criminal circles, he was the hardest heavy in the business.